to start, we'll just have you tell us your full name and where we are right now. And whenever you're ready. Okay, I'm Carolyn Obrick Houchen. Um, my full name is Kimberly Anderson Stitt. Maurice Powers in Savannah, Georgia. I'm S.R. Banks from Rochester, New York. My name is Dr. Jonathan Vlashuk. My name is Sharina Zayed, and we are in Slavic Village. Colton Clay, and we're in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. And I'm Adam Scher, currently in Maitland, Florida, with the Nomadic Photo Arc. This is Portrait of Us, a living, growing, and transforming collection of people's stories from throughout the United States. For more information on the project and the photo arc, you can find us on social media at Nomadic Photo Arc, arc is A-R-K, or visit us at nomadicphotoarc.com. Today we'll hear a story about taking care of elderly parents, driving a box truck across the country, and a couple's decision to live life with a smaller footprint. Just both say your full names and where we are right now, just so I have it. I'm Jennifer Allen, and we are in Birch Bay, Washington. And I'm Reed. We had been living in Portland, Oregon, uh, up until 2015, the middle of 2015. My parents, elderly parents, were in Massachusetts, about 30 miles south, south of Boston. We started noticing by the spring of 2015 that something was off. Reed and I looked at each other and said, we may have to go back to Boston to help the parents. We got out there in August of 2015 and stayed for almost exactly three years. Yeah, yeah we walked into the house yeah. I opened the refrigerator, moldy food everywhere, the cupboards, outdated food. Jennifer calls her brother and he says, well, looks like you're not going anywhere, are you guys? <laughs> I ended up working as a substitute teacher when I was back there for two and a half years because it gave me caregiver hours. My, my mom, fortunately, I was able to have six months with her before she passed away. And my dad was progressively getting more cognitively challenged because he has dementia mm. at 86, 87 years old. And so my brother decided to take my dad in, uh, which he relocated him against much uh, resistance. <laughs> my dad had been in that house for 50 years, practically prying his 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 hands off yeah. the door frame. Uh, so we got him into Seattle in 20, early 2017, and then from there, we hit the ground running just to close the house down. Mm -hmm. This is a house people have been in for 50 years. They had been married 64 and a half years. That's a long time. They had a 3,500 square foot, four point colonial home, a full basement. My dad's darkroom equipment mm -hmm. in there. Outside is, a, I think it was like six or seven hundred square foot art studio. My mother was an artist. Okay. So and, yeah. you have to understand there was a lot of stuff. Yeah. My full-time job besides doing the substitute teaching was to do internet research. I did my own estate sale wow. for the house. I mean everything and we sold a lot of stuff that was about a year and a half to two years of work. And Reed and I looked at each other and said, I don't want to do this to somebody else. I want to live tiny, basically. You know, I don't want stuff. Yeah. I have minimal things that I kept from my parents' home. And we sold basically everything and gave it away, except for my mom's art. We packed everything up in 2018 and put everything in, how big was that That Penske? Was it, was it, a, it was a 40, 40 by 10 by 10. The oh, are you talking about the Penske we the brought Penske, out? Yes. Penske was a 26 footer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did the driving at 60 years old. Yeah, I had I never driven a truck. Yeah. Our goal was to come out to Bellingham after we figured out that was where we wanted to live. And that was a quite the adventure because the truck broke down in the Poconos. The transmission <laughs> blew. 
And fortunately, we had a friend. And who, it was hotter than Hades. Okay, we're oh, talking. It was a hundred degrees. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so we, but when we picked up the truck, it had a weird noise, and we, and I said, look, we're going to go over five mountain passes. Mountains don't exist in New England, really. Not like that. Is this normal? This noise that we're hearing as we're driving out of. The, oh, this is fine. <laughs> So we get outside of Scranton, Pennsylvania in the Poconos and I am having to basically foot to the floor to get up any of the hills, chugga chugga 25 miles an hour. Okay, everybody go right by me. We had a friend who said, come and you know, spend a few hours and get some R&R &R. and he's way up in the hills in the Poconos. And this is just before the 4th of July. So it was literally 4th of July that week. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, we were three, supposed to be exactly. out here by the, like, 6th or 7th, and we never got here till the 15th. Yeah. <laughs> so what we ended up having to do is we stayed at Jay's. Um, we made all these phone calls. Finally, they send somebody out. The guy comes out, and he goes, well, you're just going to have to bring it in all the way back down into Scranton. No, no, to Binghamton, New York. Oh, right. So we had to drive this thing fully loaded. And they they keep driving it around and drive. I mean, so they spent two oh, hours having different people it, driving said. around. And then all of a sudden, this last guy takes it out, goes around, tries to go up this hill, and he goes, this is not right. And they, they <laughs> drive it all the way to one of the back bays. And there are literally, it's like surgeons looking at the patient. <laughs> five of them looking in the engine the thing's dead jim <laughs> literally and the manager comes and is like we're going to have to do a switch out to a different truck now you have to understand we i had somebody who was a professional packer mm. pack that because and artist. of the art there was about three to four hundred pieces of art mm. They send so, out an outfit from two hours away. So what they do <laughs> is they bring this truck around, and back they don't back. let us see anything. And I'm, like, explaining to them, they back the trucks in. So we they switched everything around right. is what they did. It okay. was all reversed. All right, so they do all this, and I'm just sitting there going, this is never going to work. We get in the truck, and we go back up to Jay's house. He says, no way. No way. This is not safe. I called Penske, and I said, you've got to fix this. And I call my, my brother and he says, you know, I'll put the fear of whatever because I'm going to tell them the lawyers are going to be calling. <laughs> my brother calls them. They call me back like half an hour later saying, we're sending another crew out to your friend's house and they're going to repack your truck. And I told them, I said, it's going to rain. They need to be tents. They need to bring And parts. thunderstorms expected. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I told him, I said, there's a lot of valuable art, a lot. So the new crew comes out, the guy opens it up and he's just like, oh my God. So the four of them proceed to start taking everything out. Well, we're talking antique furniture, stuff that came from Maine from the 1800s. Okay. We're talking art. We're, I mean, you know, we're talking some valuable stuff in there. Jay had a large front yard, so uh, yeah, they're laying well, everything out. And I had tarps, thank goodness. So I, you know, I, I brought the tarps out. And about six o'clock, it starts raining. So what happens is that they're trying frantically to get everything in there. And the lead guy, you know, and I kept checking in. Uh, I'm doing the best I can, he says. I'm doing the best I can. I understand. At about two o'clock in the morning he says i have to call my boss we can't get everything back in the truck oh my god it takes them until noon Dude. to get everything packed in wow. and something that they said oh we can do it in a couple of hours took 18 hours wow. so we then finally head out you know west white knuckling a lot of these passes you know we <laughs> we stayed in what rapid Sioux, Sioux Falls, mm -hmm. Sioux South Falls. Dakota for a couple of days, just we needed a break. We get to Bellingham, you know, in the middle of July. And we got movers that and came. we got people to help us unload, and then I call, because we had an insurance claim. We had a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. 
we had somebody come out and take photos. So they did. And so we got a settlement by just after Thanksgiving of that year. Finally, almost simultaneously with us getting the, the insurance settlement. You got a job. That I was in the middle of like multiple interviews at Whatcom at the community oh, college. Okay, okay. And so Reed and I, once everything was converging and I got the job, I realized, I said, you know, even with the job, it doesn't pay a whole lot. And so we decided, we said, you know, we're ready to live small. Mm -hmm. And with, with some of the money that we had gotten in the settlement, we were able to get our, our fifth wheel yeah, that yeah. we're living in. Yeah. Uh, so that's about the transition that we made in our 60s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was so ready. After dealing with my parents' house, it became so clear to me that my happiness is not determined not by the stuff, stuff we have that I accumulate. Right. And I don't need to accumulate more stuff because, and I really said to him, I said, I want to create a smaller footprint. And I look at us now and I'm like, you know, if somebody had to come in and clean out what we have, we're very organized. Essentially, we have a shop full of rocks and art a fifth wheel with... It would take a couple of days, basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and Reed and I have said, you know, in do we ever want to live in a house? And I said, well, maybe a tiny house. About something as big as, <coughs> as basic what, what, what we're have. living in. But yeah. it means that we would then keep accumulating stuff. Yeah. You know, is this something, is this a need or want? Or is right. this an, right. Is this essential? Right. Gee, so, maybe right. I'll size down my desires. And so instead of something big, maybe something a little small. <laughs> That was Jennifer and Reed, our neighbors at the Birch Bay RV Resort in Washington State. We talked to them in the summer of 2021. For more information on the ARC and our project Portrait of Us, you can find us on social media at Nomadic Photo ARC, ARC is A-R-K, or you can subscribe to our newsletter at portraitofus.substack.com. If you enjoyed today's story, please consider sharing it with your friends to help us continue to grow our podcast.